Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Vauxhall Corsa, which happens to be UK's top-selling car of 2021, selling 3,400 units a month last year. Oh my God, that's crazy! Here you can see the key of the vehicle. This is to unlock the car. This to lock the car. And this to open the boot of the vehicle. This key looks awfully similar to a Citroen key because PSA Group took over Vauxhall and Opel from General Motors in 2021. Yes, General Motors owned this British company, which is the oldest British car company for 95 freaking years. Straight away, we are going to be opening the engine bay. And this engine actually happens to be from the Citroen C3, which is available in India. There's insulation there. There was a diesel engine which has been discontinued. There's also an electric version of this car. Now the thing is, you might be wondering why am I reviewing a Vauxhall? Because it is UK's top-selling car. People buy it for patriotism, but you know what? It's not even a British car. Anyways, you can see the Vauxhall logo. This is a Griffin, which is a mix of a lion and an eagle. And this car is a premium hatchback in the real sense because it is loaded with a ton of features. For starters, these are all LED lights. Okay, there you can see the fog light. Now this is the DRL, but this is a mid-spec variant. The top spec variant actually gets matrix LED lights, which is able to reduce the beam in certain areas to prevent the oncoming traffic from being obstructed or blinded. And on the other side, you can see the indicators functioning, which takes the place of the DRL, of course. Now this car is finished in red color, but you know what? You have to pay an additional sixty-six thousand rupees for red color. The standard color is white, where you don't have to pay any additional money. It has got a lot of features. So front parking sensors here. This is for the radar, and it has got cameras for the radar system. Of course, I'll talk about the radars when driving this car. That's interesting, of course. Now, from the side, you realize that this is a premium hatchback because obviously the length will give it away. The length is 4060 mm, which is slightly more than four meters in length. This car actually rivals the Ford Fiesta and the Volkswagen Polo here in the UK, and it is not sold out of the UK. Because out of the UK, it's sold as the Opel Corsa, and this is the fifth generation model. The first generation model of the Opel Corsa, known as the Corsa B, was actually sold in India. Yeah, that's right. Okay, General Motors sold it, but then they discontinued it. There were three variants. There was a sedan version, there was a hatchback version, known as the Sail, and there was a station wagon known as the Swing. Now, here you can see the nozzles are placed here for the windscreen wiper, washer fluid, of course. This is a solar windscreen, something of that sort. Which absorbs heat so that the cabin doesn't get hot. Here we get 17-inch wheels. 205, 45, 17 is the size of the tires. Obviously, they get curved because this happens to be a rental. Black-colored wheels look kind of nice, and you know what? It looks quite nice from the side. In fact, you can see privacy glass at the rear. So the rear windscreen, rather the rear windows and the rear windscreen, they are tinted so that heat does not come in. Now it gets heated mirrors. It also has a puddle lamp, which puts the light from here at night, so you can clearly see. Both the front doors obviously get request sensors, but you don't even have to use them. As long as the key is in your pocket, okay, the car will auto unlock. And when you leave the car and go away, the car will auto lock. So a similar feature as the Honda City in India. Now you get rear discs, of course. From the rear, you can see the attention detail because it says Corsa here on the inside. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Again, all LED lights. In fact, you must have noticed there's no sunroof on offer. Sunroof does not come in this car. You can opt for it because it's optional. Forty-six thousand rupees, but it's a panoramic glass moonroof. It does not open. That's what I believe. Now here is where the indicator is. Beautiful Lexus type lights. Says Corsa here. Again, the Vauxhall logo. By the way, there's no rear camera on this particular variant. This is the mid variant. There's an aircraft which is going up. Okay, this is the mid variant which is priced. Hold your breath. At a colossal 19 lakh rupees, and the top variant goes to 24, 25 lakh rupees. The base variant is like 60 and a half lakh rupees. So very expensive, but very loaded a car. You get a roof spoiler here. You get a high-mounted stop lamp there. You get an antenna, and you get a rear wiper and washer as well. Now thing is, here are the parking sensors. There's a reflector here, towing hook right there. And this is the rear fog light. Fastest cars fingers of truth. Not at all disappointed because the exhaust is real AF. And let's open the boot. So I press a button. The boot will disappoint you because it is just three zero nine liters. But you know what? There is some amount of storage below. Okay, that is for the puncture repair kit because obviously it does not come with a spare wheel. There is a light here. That's about it. Let's just shut this scratchy plastic and whatnot. That's something you would expect. Doesn't feel that heavy as such. Anyways, this is where the fuel goes. You just click it, and there it opens. Now the rear seat experience isn't that great because door pockets will accommodate one bottle. It has got a six-speaker audio system, lot of hard and scratchy plastics for this price. 
and the seats seem comfortable but that seat is pushed all the way behind so there's no leg room there okay the thing is it gets isofix child seat mounts which is normal three adjustable headrests oh that's nice no center armrest no rear ac vents it does not even have usb charging ports at the rear this is so much like a honda wrv did honda actually designed this car probably yes 60 40 split seats in order to increase the boot carrying capacity we actually use this you know because we had big suitcases once i step inside i realize that legroom isn't great Knee room is good because this is scooped out. Under thigh support is poor. Headroom is just about adequate for someone as tall as me. No height adjustable seat belt. Says airbag here. It's got six airbags. There's no handle to hold on to here. There's a handle to hold on to for the, I mean the for the front seats of course. Dashboard looks very pleasing. Might kind of remind you of the new Volkswagen cars like the Tigan as well as the Virtus. Anyways, I don't know why they don't have a magazine holder here. No storage, nothing. So this is a bit of a disappointment here. The rear seat. Only thing is you've got adjustable headrest. That's kind of nice. This car is top selling for reasons best known to people who buy it. Okay, because I don't find the value in this car. Firstly, this is actually to open the hood of the vehicle. Why is it on this side? Simply because, check this out. Here you can see OBD port and some wires and all. Airbag on and off switch for the co-passenger. Because this is actually designed for left hand drive markets. And they did not bother to change the glove box. So for the right hand drive market, the gear... Uh, so for the left hand drive cars, the glove box is actually big enough, but here it is not. You can see such a chain to glove box, it's not like good, it's very small, let me shut this. There are some soft touch materials and this Mercedes logo here on the dashboard. I don't know what's wrong with Tata and PSA, they're so obsessed with Mercedes Benz. A lot of hard plastics lower down. Now, below here, can you see that? Lot of wires and all that stuff because that is for the airbag activation probably or also for the heated seats because front seats get the heating function. By the way, look at it from the side. It actually looks quite sporty and nice, huh? I like it. And there are four powertrain options as well. I'm not even including electric at the moment. So let's get to the front. For starters, I'm actually going to roll down the rear window. I press it once, one touch up and down for all the windows in this car. How freaking cool is that? Yeah, but it doesn't go all the way down. So it's kind of atkored here. Another party trick is that it actually gets isofix child seat mounts here. At the front, yeah, the front seat gets isofix child seat mounts. And the seats are nice and comfortable with this red stitching. There's a dead pedal there, the sporty seats as well. Some storage space here. These are the controls for the lights, front fog, rear fog, headlight leveler. And this is to increase or decrease the intensity, I believe, for the cluster. Very German, because obviously this is a German car. It has not been designed or engineered in the UK and that you can feel it because it is actually underpinned by the Peugeot 208 platform. Now, I put the seat all the way back, I guess. Okay, let's shut the door and yeah, it shuts with a nice thud. This is auto dimming. Here you get a mirror, no light. Here you get a mirror, again, no light, of course. And some want a storage space here, twin cup holders. There's this place to keep your key. But sometimes the car does not detect the keys inside for this button, engine start button. So you have to actually keep the key in this slot and then turn on the car. So this is the engine start stop button. In fact, it gets an electric parking brake, coin holder there, some storage space here. This is sliding. Yeah, this slides ahead and behind as well. It's a beautiful looking dashboard. I really like it. In fact, you've got leather stitching here and this sort of chrome finish as well. Steering wheel, look at this lever is a bit weird. It's adjustable both for reach as well as rake. It has to be, that's kind of expected. This is a seven inch screen. You actually get a 10 inch screen on the top variant. This is a seven inch screen. You only get a seven inch screen, whichever variant you actually buy. Here it tells you which seat belt is buckled up or not. You've got sort of spotlights here for the light, of course, on the top. SOS button here to make a phone call for help, of course. And there are a few buttons here. This is for the stop start system. This is for sport mode. This is for lane keep assist. This is to turn on and off the, I think the vehicle's alarm. And this is for the parking sensors. You can see there's a shark right there. Is a Marazzo related to this car? Okay, there's some storage space here. The only USB charging socket in this car and a 12 volt charging socket. Air conditioning gets the climate control function. Yeah, it's actually a chiller. The air conditioning works really nicely. So we're just gonna shut it for the moment. It gets heating for the front seats. Heating function is there, which is kind of nice. And uh, some physical controls here for the audio system. Let's listen to it. Audio quality is actually decent. This is to lock or unlock the vehicle. This is for the hazard light. And this screen is a bit too confusing. I do not like the screen, honestly. In fact, it is sort of a fingerprint magnet all around. 
and then you can see photos come behind and it just doesn't work flawlessly well it's very confusing a screen and then you can get into a lot of things it gets tire pressure monitoring system it gets apple carplay and android auto connectivity navigation audio all that the usual bits are there but i don't even understand where am i going because it's such a confusing screen here you can get into safety you can see the safety system it's got adas functions as well obviously but what a stupid screen i would say let's get into reverse this is how it gets into reverse and there it shows you the display for the front and rear parking sensors but it not got a rear parking camera which is very shocking to me it gets it on the high variant there it's telling you all the android auto and apple carplay this screen is another confusion it shows you a lot of data in fact tachometer is right there all digital unit and then to browse through it you have to do like this okay check this out i can get into a lot of information right there but yeah it's not such a nice screen i do not like it at all so yeah they kind of messed up the screen and the cabin just doesn't wow you as much when you look at the pricing you're like oh i definitely expect more automatic headlights and automatic wipers and all that in fact let me use the wipers right away there you can see wipers work really well and that's about it so for the price you've got certain features which do wow you over but then quality of the cabin isn't that great the horn yeah the horn is nice but nobody uses the horn here of course and that piano black finishing is actually continued all throughout the cabin as well for the automatic variants it gets a gear lever which is very similar to citroen cars it also gets paddle shifters which obviously the manual does not get these controls are actually for the cruise control system this is for steering heating and these are the controls for the audio system of the vehicle it also gets hill start assist but let's start driving right away all right we are all set to go first and foremost let me turn off the steering heating although it feels very nice but yeah i don't want to keep it on at the moment and air conditioning is off traction control we will turn off right away we are going to turn on the sport mode yeah sport mode is also activated and uh, i'm just going to change the cluster mode because i can't really see much in the cluster right now so i'm just going to get into the dial mode let's also increase the intensity of the instrument cluster i hope you can see it right now and let's just get into the vehicle settings and safety so i can read the features to you handbrake down and let's get ahead and off we go hazard lights oopsy do yeah hazard lights off it automatically turns on the traction control around 40 km per hour so let me tell you straight away that the ride is not that great because it always feels little bit disturbed although it takes big bumps nicely but over smaller bumps it feels uneasy and you can feel that all throughout over a b road you can definitely feel that the ride is not comfortable look at the way the car is not comfy at all anyways it comes with four power train options yeah that's right four power train options that's a lot because the engine is just one single one the diesel has been discontinued it was 1.5 liter diesel engine with 100 horsepower that is no longer on sale braking performance is fine the thing is that the brake pedal is very poorly calibrated so you know what initial bite is poor and then all of a sudden it becomes grabby so it becomes very jerky to operate yeah overall i would say performance is very nice for this particular engine because it feels super duper peppy here look at it pulling in second here into third gearbox actually has long throws but it is slick enough and uh, now i'm just going to take a turn which means that i have to actually take a u turn and we are actually going to come to a halt and then launch it properly here we go so coming to driving function turn off traction control traction limits when skid whatever just turn it off okay into first gear revving the motor rev still 4000 rpm soft limiter some amount of wheel spin and off we go traction control got activated again now the thing is that the base engine is an na engine so all the engines are actually the same 1.2 liter three cylinder petrol engine which also powers the citroen c3 in india this one produces 75 horsepower and 118 newton meters of torque in the na engine the base engine that is and then this particular car gets a turbocharger so the turbocharged engine actually produces 100 horsepower and 205 newton meters of torque and then the same engine can be had with an automatic gearbox and eight speed automatic so right now we are having a six speed manual there's an eight speed automatic and then there's another higher tune with only the eight speed automatic which is producing 130 horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque that is by far the fastest engine for this particular car going from 0 to 100 km per hour in 8.2 seconds this one actually goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in 9.3 seconds and with the same output the 8 speed automatic gearbox actually takes 0.9 seconds more to go from 0 to 100 km per hour in 10.2 seconds so it's decently quick with a top speed of 195 km per hour yeah it is a punchy motor it has good amount of grunt low end lag is there but it's well contained mid range is really very nice and strong and then the top end 
it gets a bit vocal in fact the sport mode adds some weight to the steering wheel along with that it also adds some fake sounds from the exhaust so that is artificial sound coming through the speakers of course performance is really nice this engine is so good now it actually won the 2018 engine of the year award that's how good it is the clutch is okay the problem is although it's on the lighter side it has a very weird bite point and then that makes it a little difficult and plus the pedal placement is very much like old tata and mahindra that's the reason it's a bit like awkward and the result is that when you are actually driving this car in stop go traffic your calf starts to pain that is how the calibration of the clutch and the other pedals has been done but the response from the engine is really very nice it feels so punchy pulls really strongly and puts a big smile on your face this is actually a very fast car and very much fun to drive as well in fact the manual is definitely the pick of the lot because a manual is obviously a manual into first gear traction control again off revving the motor and off we go oh quite a bit of wheel spin So the thing is that the handling isn't that great. Okay. Center feel is very nice, but overall body roll is there and this isn't a car you would like to push around corners because everything is on the softer side yet the ride is not that brilliant. So I don't know what they're trying to achieve with this kind of a setup. Now this is the Peugeot 208 platform which underpins this car because PSA group actually bought over Opel and Vauxhall from General Motors which owned it for 95 years. General Motors actually bought Vauxhall in 1925 and then started to buy Opel around 1927 and then took over it completely around 1931 or something of that sort. And they sold it after 95 years of ownership in January 2021 to PSA which obviously, you know, just made this Vauxhall by lending over the chassis, the engine, everything from the parts bin to the Vauxhall engineering team probably in the UK or in Germany where Opel is because this is basically an Opel Corsa underneath in every possible way. Yeah, I would have expected better steering feel because you know what the steering doesn't weigh up that well also it just I mean it weighs up but doesn't have that level of feel feedback and connectedness unfortunately. Overall I would say it's an average drive experience which brings me to the price of this car okay starts at 16.5 lakhs for the base variant and goes all the way to 25 lakhs for the top variant you pay 2.4 lakhs more for the automatic variant and this being the mid level trim which is the GS line is priced around 19.5 lakhs okay the top end is the ultimate variant and it's very pricey in fact it's not the best in terms of warranty it's not the best in terms of reliability it's not even the best in terms of safety this car has got a four star end cap rating whereas its rivals have actually got a five star rating yet people buy it with eyes closed and i think we are going to reach a dead end or something of that sort i have no clue where i'm driving but anyways these roads seem to be the better ones out here because there's just no one around so i can just try and figure out how the ride quality of this car is which kind of disappoints me this car has disappointed me in a lot of ways yeah it is kind of feature loaded well put together build quality is nice but it's not the safest it's definitely not uh, <laughs> the most desirable or the most value for money in that regard are people buying this because of patriotism it's not even english it's not even a british car because it's german or french now underneath or in, uh, in all other ways so that confusion is looming largely over me right now let's stop here into first gear having the motor so this car has actually got a slew of adas functions it has got adaptive high beam which basically puts the car from high beam to low beam automatically when it senses there's someone ahead that's not all it's got driver drowsiness detection as well it's got uh, i mean it can read speeds and show you in the cluster what is the speed limit right not showing nothing at all obviously you know what voxel is the oldest uk car company yaar yeah, the oldest but unfortunately it's not really british because obviously you know now the ownership has gone from here to there by the way the base variant's name is actually known as design there are actually five variants on offer because for the electric there are two variants and the electric is actually not available in the base design trim it's only available in the mid level gs line as well as the top end ultimate trim and then it also has a decent battery i think around 50 kilowatts somewhere around that and has a range of around 355.2 kilometers that's the claim range so yeah the electric version is also quite good but unfortunately actually it's very expensive in fact the electric version's price goes all the way to almost 27 lakhs yeah that makes it quite expensive actually so i don't know what voxel is up to but people are buying the cars eyes closed even though it has a waiting period of 5 freaking months kahan ja rahe hain hum log
and off we go. So this car has actually got lane keep assist. It has, oh my God, you can hear it. Insulation is not that good. You can hear a lot of the wind and tire noise. So this car has got lane keep assist. Actually, it has got lane departure warning. So it tells you when you're departing a lane. It has also got forward collision warning. So it tells you here, you know, is there someone ahead and then you should brake. It also tells you all that. The instrument cluster isn't that great, unfortunately. And then, Voxel actually plans to go completely electric in the next six years. That's right. In the next six years, Voxel will go completely electric. That is by 2028. UK will go completely electric by 2035. So the fun is going to end soon. <laughs> and off we go. Some wheel spin finally. Anyways, if you're planning to buy a Voxel Corsa, do not do it because you can't, it's not available in India. It's not going to be available in India anytime soon. Secondly, if you happen to be in a country where the Corsa is available either as a Voxel or an Opel, you should definitely avoid the 1.2 liter NA engine which produces just 75 horsepower and 180 newton meters of torque because that's very lackluster. This turbo engine is fantastic. In fact, the turbo engine has so much performance that it's going to drink a lot more fuel. Voxel knows that. That's the reason this car actually has a 4 liter bigger fuel tank capacity at 44 liters compared to the 40 liters in the NA variant. And overall, I would say this is a great car to rent because most rental car companies are actually using the Voxel Corsa and news around is that this gets very easily stolen as well. I don't know why. Like people are able to recognize our car by saying, oh, that's the Corsa, you must have rented it so easily. That's kind of weird. So guys, this is my vlog of the Voxel Corsa. If you liked it, make sure to give the thumbs up. That's a like button and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Look at the way these beautiful roads are just never ending here. So much fun to drive. Bye-bye.